This is Pandora, my giant 1,000 gallon cloud rainforest vivarium. It's beautiful, isn't it? This rainforest construction took me months of research, weeks of planning, and six days to construct. But though majestic in its current natural splendor, it was still incomplete. You see, my idea was for Pandora to be an ecosystem vivarium. And with all its plants now in place, all it needed now was the animals. And here they were. I've waited months to execute this titanic event. I call Gaia, the Great Animal Integration Advent, where I will release an initial team of animals to jumpstart the ecosystem. Many animals in holding containers were waiting patiently to be set free onto Pandoran soils. To each serve their function in the contained ecosystem I was trying to create. But little did I know, my giant rainforest ecosystem vivarium operation would not quite go as planned, and chaos would interrupt the order I had set in place. This is the craziest story of how a war of creatures broke out in my giant rainforest vivarium this week in a way I could have never predicted. And all I could do was watch it all play out in nature's signature raw and often harsh way, leaving my jaw on the floor. Welcome to part five of my ecosystem vivarium series where mother nature starts to take over the show here on the Ants Canada Ant Channel. subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC fam. Enjoy. Hey. The giant hand of the creator of worlds released the house gecko into Pandora. She was the first member to enter for the Gaia event. At just the right moment, she leaped down and fell into a pillowy bed of vining plants and moss. Sitting still, she couldn't help but suddenly take in the vast new world into which she had just been released. Whoa, she thought to herself in awe. Where am I? This place was big, real big, and ominous as the clouds began to roll in. But she knew better than to just start romping around and mindlessly begin exploring. Her instincts were telling her that these lands, though beautiful, were also hostile and dangerous. She had best watch her step but she was the first animal to be placed in. How dangerous could Pandora be, right? Well, AC family, turns out she was right. And I too discovered the truth about Pandora two days prior to Gaia. These lands were already a literal war zone and a Pandora-wide race to domination of parties had already begun amongst the most unlikely of creatures. The day before adding all the animals in, I spotted a colony of ants, hot in action. Ants? What kind of ants? I tried my best to identify their species as I watched them trailing energetically along the vertical facade of the Hallelujah tree stump. They looked so familiar. I followed their trail and watched as they came and went from an inconspicuous hole in the driftwood. Were the ants living in this tree stump? I followed them down another trail, the established, down the wood towards the mossy floor. And that's when I saw it. A super major, no way, these were marauder ants. What were marauder ants doing in here? In disbelief, I had to double check on my leviathans, my longtime colony of marauder ants, to see if they had somehow escaped or something. But nope, all was well and the leviathans were all in their setup. These marauder ants were another colony and must have been introduced by way of the tree stump. When we first extracted the stump from the ground, I do remember a lot of us getting bitten by marauder ants, but I just assumed it was from an ant trail passing by the stump because marauders usually nest in soil, not wood. It never occurred to me that there were possibly marauder ants actually living inside the stump. Furthermore, I was never bit once during the installation of the stump into the tank. But now that I saw them in here, I had some questions. Judging from their active trails and the size of the super majors, 
This was no young colony of marauders. How big was this colony? They had to be a colony in the thousands of workers, at least, to have super majors. Was the queen in here too? Or was she left in the ground at the site of extraction? I couldn't help but wonder. But as I stressed to think about what would happen if this marauder ant colony would completely grow to dominate Pandora, I was suddenly brought aback by the frightful sighting I made next. No way. Fire ants. What were fire ants doing in here? I checked up on Volcania, my fire ant island of the Crimson Knights, but they too were also inside and secured. So these fire ants were introduced too, perhaps through the soils of one of the plants. I watched as they worked vigorously to construct their tunnels. There were a lot, perhaps not as many as marauder ants, but enough. They had to be a somewhat smaller colony because had they been bigger, I definitely would have been attacked and stung during planting and would have surely noticed. It was just dismaying though to see that fire ants had been introduced to Pandora because as many of you may know, fire ants are invasive and are notorious at killing, displacing, and outcompeting native ants in the ecosystems they have conquered. Furthermore, what I found crazy was how close the fire ant nest was to the active trails of the marauder ants. Have a look. Fire ants were brave enough to start wandering onto the mossy beds, and just a stone's throw away were the marauders. I felt it was only a matter of time before the fire and marauder ant lines would meet. In fact, they already were. This was a classic scene of Team Native versus Team Invasive Ants. And I couldn't believe it was all playing out right before my eyes within our ecosystem vivarium of Pandora. At the summit of the Hallelujah tree stump, termites were quietly performing their important work. There were termites in here too? I couldn't believe it. These were Nasuti termites termites that live in and eat wood. Looks like this tree stump brought in a lot of cool creatures to seed Pandora. Check out the soldiers. They have these special tubes that stick out of their faces from which a nauseous sticky chemical mix can be shot out at enemies, mainly ants. So cool, right? I felt honored to watch this colony of termites repairing and building their tunnels along the outside of this tree stump. These dirt tunnels, by the way, are made from their poop and harden to form a protective tube through which the colony could navigate around safely as they ate through the wood. I began to wonder if the termites were the reason the marauders loved living inside the tree stump. There was a constant food source available to them here. Assuming they're quick enough to dodge the sticky stuff shot at them from the soldiers, of course. In two hours, the tunnels were done and the termites could continue working and eating within the privacy of their concealed darkened poop tunnels, safe from any ants for now. Pandora had become a place where new unlikely animal life was springing forth. A little tiny reflection of light caught my eye, like something was using a tiny mirror to morse code me a message. Do you see it? I looked onto a clump of some baby seedlings and spotted a tiny creature. A small fly that just emerged from its pupa in the soils looked out into the new world with its new fly body. It ran its legs through its unused wings to get the hemolymph flowing through its veins in preparation for its first flight. It was interesting to see that even prey animals, like flies, had unintentionally found their way into Pandora. The marauder ants were really trailing now, establishing clear lines to and from various places in Pandora. Even the majors dispatched to protect the trails, or perhaps chop things. Watching them make their way through the tall moss was like watching a pack of wolves moving swiftly through the woods. I actually love marauder ants because of the way they trail. They were still marching up the wood, but one such trail coming from the right of the foot of the hallelujah stump was especially active, and I followed it to see what all the marauder fuss was about. Let's see what these ants are up to. In fact, this path became so important to the ants that they began clear-cutting all living moss laying in the way. They were determined to make this a permanent marauder highway. 
and the moss wasn't their favorite track flooring to navigate. Piece by piece, the workers worked hard to cut the moss up. And, hey, what's that? Amazing! I then discovered that these moss forests, through which our marauders were parading, were home to these creatures, tiny rove beetles. They crawled through the moss, searching for food. My guess was they were either hunting little tiny creatures that live in the moss, or were feeding on the fungi that attack the moss. Rove beetles, depending on species, can have very diverse diets. But cool to see the marauders not interested in bothering them at all. It was at this time that I also found something else in the moss that the marauders didn't bother with. See it? That little ant making its way through the moss entanglement is no marauder ant, nor is it a fire ant. I'm actually unsure what species it is, perhaps Calyptomyrmex, but let's tentatively call them dwarf ants for now. And I watched it come in contact with a marauder and nothing. The marauder ant went on with its business, knowing this dwarf ant was no threat. I guess a colony of these dwarf ants too were introduced into Pandora unintentionally, and they were actively foraging alongside the marauders now. I have never ever seen this behavior before, and would have never been able to in a captive setting where I never mix ant colonies together. Interesting to know that in the wild, not all ants are enemies. Okay, so why were the marauders so eager to cut a trail through here? What were they after? Following the trail from the Hallelujah stump through the moss, I noticed the trail extending to the eastern lands of Pandora. To here, the Cave of Wonders, whose dark and humid cavernous chambers extend into the moss hills that surround it. Interesting. Were the marauders planning on relocating from the Hallelujah stump to the cave? What was so special about this cave? I would soon find out, but I was suddenly distracted by a commotion happening at the other end of Pandora. A fight between a fire ant and two marauder ants. It happened fast, but this was the official beginning of the war. The marauder ants, now alarmed by the presence of the fire ants, scrambled around in a bloody mission to kill. The marauder ants sounded the enemy alarm by releasing a pheromone, which would soon reach other members of the colony. Marauders began hunting the stray fire ants down as they ducked and hid into the moss to evade the marauder forces. As tense as the marauder ants versus fire ants drama was, I found the scene riveting. A major was informed of the fire ant forces and it came rampaging through to help defend. Oh, it was over. Like an angry rhino, she pushed forth through the moss and appeared on the scene where she could smell the fire ant blood all around. Where are they? Where are they? Let me at them. I would hate to be a fire ant contending with a worked up marauder major right now. The fire ants were too distracted to notice how close they were coming to her. But suddenly, bam, a fire ant ran straight into her jaws and she chomped down with a force the fire ant had never known. Another marauder helping along, but the fire ant escaped, which enraged the major even more as she rampaged around in search of more fire ants. A wounded fire ant came out of hiding right in the major's path. And again, the major went down to finish the fire ant off. But suddenly, the major recoiled in pain. The fire ant had stung it, probably right in the chin. The major retreated and stationed behind a boulder of soil. Was this sting fatal? Not yet. I watched as the major brushed herself off still clearly in pain, to return to the site to continue finishing off the fire ant. But before she could get to it, it escaped into a darkened hole in the soil. I couldn't believe the battle I had just witnessed, but I don't think anything could have prepared me for how this great war between ant powers would soon end and what other superpowers were waiting in the wings to join in on this fight. A tiny baby grasshopper began making its way up the glass. Moving ever so slowly, it needed to move leg by leg like this in order that predators wouldn't easily spot it. From afar, one could hardly see that it was moving ever so slowly and ever so smoothly. 
This grasshopper must have been introduced here too, through one of the plants. And it seemed it too was well aware that Pandora was full of dangers. But just as I began to become entranced by the grasshopper's slow-mo trot, an ant appeared on the scene. It was a black crazy ant. What? No! There were black crazy ants in here too? How? Black crazy ants are another invasive species. And here was a scout inspecting the lands. It could smell the trail of marauders and moved away at a safe distance to study what the marauders were up to. It followed the path of marauder ants safely above their trail. And when it felt it had gathered all information it needed, it turned back to head home to the colony to share what it had learned. Where in Pandora were the black crazy ants camped out? I was determined to follow it. A jumping spider who we saw in the last video, was actually misgendered by me as a male. Turns out, she's a female. Guess I should have asked for her pronouns. She sat contently, eating the fly she had just caught. Guess the fly we saw earlier had a short flight. It was awesome to know that the predators were already managing to hunt and find prey. But then I spotted another jumping spider. But this time, it was on the outside of the tank. This was a male, and you'll see why in a sec. Hey there, little guy. I bet he could smell there was a female inside. So I captured him and put him inside. He landed onto the asparagus fern. The jumping spider stood still for a second, but then moved to look around. Enjoy Pandora, little one. Welcome to your new home. I was pleased to discover how stunning and handsome he was. See those two bulbous organs on the sides of his face? Those are emboli, and how you can tell he's a male spider. But what amazed me was how intelligent and aware he seemed as he assessed what had just happened and where he was now. He then turned to explore his new surroundings with his multiple eyes, which give him some amazing powers of sight. Jumping spiders are some of the coolest spiders around that don't make permanent webs, but are always on the move, stalking their prey. I hoped he would find the female and help seed a new generation of jumping spiders within Pandora. It was then that I decided to name these two jumping spiders, Adam and Eve. He leaped and landed onto a nearby vine where he could smell his Eve's lifeline silk somewhere nearby and continued on his search for her, running up the vine. It was finally the big day of Gaia, the day more animals would be moving in. I couldn't help but stop and stare at the beauty of Pandora at sunrise as the misty clouds blew through the lands it was all so beautiful. How on earth did we create this, AC family? The mist formed a morning dew on all the plants, and it was as if we were given this blessed, unique opportunity to watch how a rainforest prepares for its day of biological action. I can honestly say, creating this ecosystem vivarium with all of you has been one of the best experiences of my life. I mean, it's crazy to think that this entire thing began as our idea and watching it all come together and manifest before our eyes has been my greatest honor. I continued to spot new creatures at every corner. A small millipede wandered the vegetation. It only preferred to emerge when the mists blew through. It searched the vegetation and rotting material to chew on before retreating into the shadows during the drier parts of the day. The shoulder of the hallelujah tree stump was the chosen location for a young orb weaver spider who lay in its web waiting patiently for a catch. Little delicate mushrooms poked out from the soils overnight to spread their spores throughout the area. A weevil beetle up on the moss wall emerged to greet the morning mist before heading back into the moss wall when the mist ended. But that's when I spotted a black crazy ant. This was where they were stationed. From what I could see, they were gathering within one of the larger talangas on the moss wall. They had probably set up a station somewhere behind the wall. And look, they were full. In fact, I began to wonder, what were all these ants even eating while inspecting marauder ant trails whose dirt roads through the moss were now pretty defined? I did also catch one ant feeding a major through Trophallaxis. Were the ants managing to find an ample food source I didn't know about, despite it being prior to me adding creatures in? Where were the ants finding their food? Or was it drink? AC family, this question led me to a pretty amazing discovery. 
At Pandora's pond area, I spotted a couple snails, probably introduced through the floating water lettuce. But more interestingly, I spotted ants, marauder ants, on the water lettuce with social stomachs full of pond water. Wow! I had no idea marauder ants were so proficient around water. But how are they getting here? Surely they didn't swim. Nope. Turns out, they were climbing the vines. What? Marauder ants were capable of going arboreal? Now this was new info. Furthermore, check this out. Our pond water was tinted, a dark brown color. But don't panic, this was all totally normal, as the tint was from tannins leaching from the wood that was in the water. It actually made these waters very healthy for animals living in it and highly nutritious for animals drinking from it. It was like a natural tea for animals. And that's when I realized, aha! That's why the marauders had established a highway to and from the Cave of Wonders. They were sourcing this nutrient-rich water from the pond. This water system was a valuable natural resource for the marauders, hence the highway, and even the black crazy ants, who were also visiting the pond for the precious nutrient-rich tea water. But AC family, after making this cool discovery, then came what had to be the saddest scene I witnessed in Pandora. A fire ant and a marauder major in a deathlock. It was hard to tell exactly what was happening, but from the looks of things, the fire ant had chopped down on the waist segment of the major, who had probably been stung in the head or thorax. The fire ant had also been badly injured, but why weren't the other marauder ants helping their large major sister? You would think they would all be swarming in there to help her out, but no. It was as if the major was shouting for the other marauders to stay back. The major knew she would be dying today and felt it wasn't worth losing another marauder on her team to a possible sting from the also dying fire ant. This was a one for one battle and both ants would be dying now. The marauder sisters watched from the sidelines not even other majors jumping in. And then, in a shocking turn of heart-wrenching events, the marauders began to bury both the major and the fire ant until they were completely concealed in soil. This truly sad scene stayed in my mind over the next few days and affected me greatly for some reason. As a personal rule, I don't intentionally war my pet ant colonies together, but this was different. I didn't meticulously raise these ants as my pets from just their queens. These were wild ants with a wild understanding of the world and wild intentions of survival. It was actually one of the reasons I created this whole ecosystem vivarium in the first place. I wanted to study just how ants truly live out in nature in a way that I couldn't through my ant farms, including the real dangers they would contend with in their natural habitat like living among other species of ants. I had learned a lot so far, but I knew this was all just the beginning. It seemed the marauders had come out victorious in the end though. The fire ants had retreated, completely sealing up their nest holes. Not a fire ant in sight now, but I knew better than to think this was the last we'd see of them. I knew this strategy all too well. Protected below ground, assuming there was a queen in there, the fire ants would focus on amassing their numbers, only surfacing to forage for food in safer areas away from the marauders. Then, once a larger colony, emerging strong to fight them. The power of fire ants lies in their numbers, and the fire ants knew exactly what they were doing. Only time would tell if the fire ants would return, to seek vengeance one day, to wipe out their adversaries, and claim Pandora and all its resources theirs. Inside, I hope not. I also wondered how the black crazy ants would come into play with all this. But the reality is, invasives are also part of many ecosystems. An ecosystem is what I sought to design, and it turns out, an ecosystem was exactly what we got. Everything was pushing the limits of survival in this tank. I mean, have a look at this. The banyan tree vines I strung all around the vivarium, thinking they were dead were indeed not. 
new air roots were starting to sprout from them, both underwater and in the air. The vines were alive. Did this mean that a whole banyan tree was about to grow in Pandora? Crazy to discover that even an entire tree was secretly conspiring to clone itself into existence to become alive within our rainforest vivarium. The marauders were using these vines now too, as highways to access all areas of the forest. Pandora had indeed taken on a dynamic energy and soul of its own, and all we could do now was watch the system take shape. To quote my favorite movie of all time, if there's one thing the history of evolution has taught us, it's that life will not be contained. Life breaks free. It expands to new territories and crashes through barriers, painfully, maybe even dangerously. Uh, okay, let's just omit that last part. I spotted Eve, our jumping spider, now feasting on one of the marauder ants she caught traveling along the vines. And I was reminded that though danger was at every turn in these vast lands for the creatures, so too was life. Pandora, our cloud rainforest vivarium, was already a functioning ecosystem. Life found a way. But it's time we kick it up a notch. Greater biodiversity in an ecosystem means a healthier ecosystem. Now imagine how much more epic Pandora would be when we add more creatures in it. It was time to find out. The moment of Gaia has arrived. And after adding in our first house gecko, who seemed to be deep in thought as she stared into the vastness of Pandora's misty lands, I proceeded with the addition of the other animals. This was going to be so much fun. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.